Celebrating 20 years of this game, I'm gonna state things I wish to have in the remake. First thing we have the difficulty settings. We have the rookie for a range. And we have normal and easy for the original game. I'd like to have the difficulty higher, uh, higher difficulties as well. And for scenarios, I'd like to have all scenarios, four scenarios if possible. A couple of characters that were promised in the original game to be assistant. Robert Kindo for Claire scenario A. I'd like to have, see more of him. And Marvin Brana was promised for the Leon scenario in the 1.5 version. I'd like to see more of him ins instead of just having them ready to die. When moving from scenario A to scenario B, there is the absurdity of uh, having to op reopen doors. Sometimes the doors are open first in scenario B, uh, or not locked at all. So the need to, to reopen to unlock the same doors in scenario A is even more absurd when the person in scenario A enters the place after the person in scenario B. There is this silly moment of Leon B not needing the key to open the door, but Claire who enters after him needs a key, needs a spade key. Things like this need to be fixed. When playing the old game, there is, it's okay to lower the emergency ladder four different times, twice in one plot, scenario A and scenario B. We accept it, this game is a classic. But it's three generations old, from a console three generations old. One thing that feels absurd even on this generation of consoles is when you have to uh, douse the helicopter fire twice in one plot. Why? It's unnecessary. You do it twice in one story, you find the, the wheel valve twice in two different places in one plot. Once in the cabin and once in the police conference room uh, for the office station. And the silliest thing, what makes it even sillier, is that scenario B comes to the RPD first, does the fire, sees the helicopter crash, does the fire before the character in scenario A enters the RPD. This makes it really weak when you do it. It's even weaker when you look at the roof, a uh, sh shattered roof from the fall of Mr. X, the TO2 tyrant. I'd like to have the option of saving the guy on the roof before shooting the helicopter pilot. It will be nice, it will be also like saving, having the option of saving Brad in the bar in Resident Evil 3. Another thing I'd like to connect with to Resident Evil 3 is seeing the window of facing the stairs shattered. In, in Resident Evil 3 it shatters before Leon and Claire come into the RPD. And in the Nintendo 64 version of Resident Evil 2 you find the memories of Brad talking about Nemesis. The idea of finding special key in Living Dead Brad Pocket is okay, I like it for special outfits, but I think it could be improved. Instead of going to the dark room to find the different outfits in the locker, we should go to the police dormitory to find more outfits for each character and more weapons. And please retain the special cheat code for this unlimited ammo. I miss the old retro feeling of punching cheats in. And please retain the special cheat code for this unlimited ammo. I miss the old retro feeling of punching cheats in. It will be so nice to blow up heads from a longer distance using a shotgun. 
and the auto aim. The auto aim should return for the Resident Evil 2 remake. I also like to see her characters die general and no action button to ride to climb the stairs. There is a body in the background. It disappears once the cutscene starts. I'd like to see that problem fixed. Fixed camera angles adds to the atmosphere. It's good. The problem is sometimes it masks the character so you don't know where it turns. Of course, auto aim turns around it, but when you have enemies from all around, it's still a problem. I'd like to see more fixed, something more flexible, like in Lost in Nightmares or even Code Veronica X. When you play one plot, like Claire A. Leon B, you see you find different items in the same place. It feels weird. It's weirder when you open the same closet to find different items. Well, this sh this need to be addressed in the remake. When the two secondary characters for each scenario go to the same place to take the same item after pushing the same boxes to raise the same water, it feels redundant. This issue needs to be addressed in the remake. Another issue in this situation that needs to be addressed is the meeting of different enemies. Uh, like, uh, say, Leon A, Claire B should be zombie dogs, and Claire A, Leon B should be zombies. Instead of each one in scenario A meeting dogs and scenario B meeting zombies. Make it more consistent. Give Leon the same key Sherry gave, uh, gave Claire to open the exact same doors, to, to use the same lighter on the same fireplace, to, you, to uh, take the same item, but the only difference is Leon B takes uh, to have to face uh, Mr. X in this situation. Yeah, no, it doesn't make sense. And then they go to same uh, to put the same item in the same place to take the same item. I know there's a pro issue with uh, opening the same doors. Is like there are lots of them, like the master fuse. Scenario A opens uses the master fuse. Scenario B has to do the same thing after the power is already supplied. Why? Facehugger pushes Xenomorph Egg to inside host body to burst out. I'd like to be able to put to kill the thing before it grows, after it bursts out of the person body. It would be a nice option instead of making this an obligatory boss. For characters in scenario A. Resident Evil 6 made it canon that Cherry received the embryo from her father. It would make more sense to have it uh, in both scenarios this time, w seeing her father infect her by uh, the embryo. It would be nice to see, to see Cherry uh, saved earlier uh, in scenario Claire B. For the Dark Side Chronicles, uh, developers did a good choice by making uh, Leon and Claire hide from William after he kills Ben. This should be good, this should be used again. Instead of uh, making Billy disappear uh, magically after he kills Ben. The Crocodile is an okay boss, I have no problem with it in this game, but for the remake, it shouldn't be this messy. Look at this. William was standing on it, and then it comes out of nowhere in a tight space that doesn't fit it. Claire should definitely be eaten in this situation. She had no time to dodge. And then you have to run away from it 
to to trick it into eating i don't know why it cho- chooses to put it to put the cylinder in the its mouth but you do it you make use of it and it kill it dies when you examine claire witnessing wounded leon underground you in scenario b claire b you notice that chronologically claire goes to where the crocodile is first so technically she should be the one to fight the crocodile in both her scenario a and scenario b another good thing to take from the dark side chronicles is annette's personality in this game she just meets someone and talk about the virus, talk about her items, talk about her history, like casual talk, yo, of how her husband made the virus, he got shot, and injected himself. <laughs> shot. Kill. And she has bla- fa- bla- flashback to how she he killed the, all the enemies, slaughtered the umbrella soldiers, and then Claire fe- sends her back to where she came from the place where Claire came back to when the la- they later meet why is why is Annette mad that Claire killed her husband her husband is a monster he's already dead he's just a walking corpse m- animated by a virus who kills people and then slices her yeah and when she meets Ada she tells her Hey, you're a spy. I'm gonna tell you the secrets. Spy. Ha ha ha. And then I'm gonna kill you. Wait, I don't want to kill you. Spy. I'm just gonna point my gun at you and tell you everything. She's stupid. Here's a funny thing from pro- plot Claire B. Leon A. She looks at the monitors, she sees the monsters hunting her daughter. She's afraid for the sake of her daughter, go, wants to go there. And instead she goes, hits to the opposite direction. To talk to Leon and give her her secrets about the virus, tell him about Ada, that she's a spy. Uh, I don't know why. Just because it rhymes. Or something, plot reasons, whatever. And then she dies by pipes falling on her head. And then she walks. To shoot Ada. Okay, Ada should be killed from this slash. There's no way she survi- she should survive. And in her death scene, before presenting the character in scenario B with a rocket launcher to help in fighting Mr. X, TO2 tyrant, in a second form. She, there is no way she should survive this plot. Not this fall, and definitely not, uh, not being thrown like this on the self-destruct mechanism and bleeding this much. No way there she should walk out of this. Look how wounded he is. He's dying. He's dead. And this and then this place explodes. He dies from explosions. He should die. There is no way he followed. Why do we see him involved this much to look this ugly? Why? And then he melts after getting shot to be uh, to revive again shortly after and dies from this explosion. He's killed by a smaller explosion than the one he survived and evolved from. Why did he survive the first one? It doesn't make sense. This request is not, isn't much of a necessity. It's, it should be optional. I'll be okay if it's not there, but I'd like to see these cutscenes, uh, these epilogues in Resident Evil 3 turn to cutscenes. It would be nice. Well, maybe not. And yeah, maybe not this one either. 
Okay, this is one of my wishes. What do you agree with? What are your wishes? 